I'm gonna mute myself to play this, because it's loud. Google, light at hundred percent. So basically what's happening here is uh I am uh I'm just processing the the orders. So if I remember correctly there was like around uh, there was 162 yeah, 162 products total. So there was I think 80 hoodies and uh 80 82 shirts and basically um, the ones that required the most processing in terms of like the time required to process it was the shirts because in the packaging that I came from for the suppliers, it always it will always be like super wrinkly. So I had to like kind of steam it. You can see it in some of the clips where I'm steam like in all of the clips, like part of the process of me like processing them is is steaming the shirt. So that just so I make sure the wrinkles are gone because I wouldn't like to receive a shirt from someone and having it be all wrinkled. It's like to me, it should be ready to wear when you get it out the package. Right. And, and shipping and all that, like it will probably get wrinkled. So if it's wrinkled and then you move the pa package around, like after it's processed, it gets more wrinkled and it's basically not wearable and very non-presentable. So that's why like I take the time to steam it. So the reason why, oh, sorry, I just hit the, the, the mic stand. But the reason why uh, it's like I have to speed this up and make it a time lapse is because most of these clips, I think the like the first one or the first two are like an hour out of three that I recorded. Um, 
and I think it would be like the last hour. I think the first one is actually just the full the full start to to end of the shift. I call them shifts, like processing shifts. So uh, I didn't want to just show you a clip. I want to show you the actual time I spent just sitting down and processing all of these hoodies and I mean all of these shirts. Uh, it was very that that was very definitely one of the most like uh, I don't know what the word is, but like the slowest part where it was like it's so repetitive that it's like oh my god like i just oh it's the same thing of just processing a shirt like over and over again for like two three hours because some of these shifts were like three hours long where i was really just folding uh steaming and then putting it in a bag and then putting like the the uh, piece of paper that's just giving like information and stuff on like how much uh was donated and there was one of the shirts where the back had like a printing error from the supplier so i put a, a thing that said this is what the print was supposed to look like and then uh give them a discount code for it not being what i advertised basically um i didn't have time to sample because it was very fast drop and i wanted to get the money fast so i didn't have time to sample it and then see if everything was fine and do it i just had to do the mock-ups and then hope that everything came out nice there was like a lot of difficulties with the hoodies because the hoodies were coming from a u.s manufacturer the shirts were in canada so it, it came fast but um what happened with the hoodies was with covid like the manufacturer was working slower in the first place and then two it had to ship to me um from the u.s and that was like i think seven business days and then on top of that um the stuff all went to fedex to be held and then when it was held i had to pay duties and taxes because apparently for covid if you're going cross borders you have to pay extra for duties and taxes so it was like a shit ton of money i won't say it but it was a shit ton of money to get these things like um to pay for these things just going through the border and to get them and then that added extra time for me getting them but then um basically we ship i shipped the hoodies with i shipped the shirts the t-shirts with jay while i was waiting for the hoodies to come and then when the hoodies came i processed those and then we shipped those out and it was it was a very 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 interesting uh process i think one then like the last clip of this um because i'm i'm recording this after like setting up all the clips i think in the last clip I, I i explained the the delivery process and how long it took and and, and all of that um but it was very it was a very funny experience though um, Ala, Ala's calling me, um, Ala, you want to say hi? I'm recording information about the drop. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, do you want me to call you back? Uh, yeah, one second. I was just mute myself, actually. Are you home? No, not yet. I'm, um, in the car because my mom went down to Walmart, so I don't want to be alone. I, I, I'll call you in a sec. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Um, but yeah that's that's basically what happened um it was very fun though i enjoyed it so it's not like it was like a, a bother it was a very fun learning process but yeah i think there should be enough time of talking to make up for the time lapse being bored so bye bye okay so i'm gonna try to get back into recording the process a bit more still because I haven't done it in like a month probably and I wanted when I posted the first thing which I didn't really publicize because at first I wanted it to be private but now I might use it for content here and there but um I really want to do it consistently where it's just because I'm one man so like doing all of this shit that I record myself doing plus recording it and like having to edit it on top of that adds an extra task on the amount of tasks that I have to do so it's easy to like forget it, but I really want to put this up the priorities list of things to do because to me documenting is so important and like having the thing there so you can look back on it. That's why like I also journal because like I, I like to look back and like see where I was and what has brought me to the point that I'm at. So just a quick update. I did the the hoodies are finally, finally done. Like yeah, basically done, I'd say like ninety seven percent. Like the rest of the hoodies are not in my control. They've been Everything I have to do has been done. They've been shipped out. I'm just waiting for everything to be shipped for me to call it 100% complete. That's a mindset like change I've had where um, I would, while doing this drop, it's like the most amount of clothes I've ever sold from a drop. 
and it helped me learn a lot about the process of handling a big amount of orders and I thought it was like the old orders where I could do other stuff while I'm taking care of this but the fact that I'm one dude processing all of them really required me to take all of the time that I could to do it but then I didn't know that so I started taking on new tasks and like what happened was like when you're when you when you have a task that's so important it's complete but it stays incomplete and in the back of your head you always know it's incomplete so there's a lot of like uneasiness you can never really be at ease because you know people are waiting for a product so I realized that there's a big importance and even if you do multiple things whatever you're doing right now you need to go 100% until it's 100% done you give it your full attention and I'm learning this from like things I'm reading um, but it's the thing I want to apply to Dojo where as much as we're multi multidisciplinary, like it's important for whatever discipline that is being worked on, it needs to be given full attention because multitasking is detrimental. So um, that was one of the biggest things I learned from that job. But it's finally done now. Yeah, it's been like over a month, but I think I did pretty well. Uh, it was very fun doing the auto orders like me and Jay. Uh, shout out Jay for that because we did it over five days and I think when I counted all the hours it came up to like 16 hours and I did one day with Allah where it was it came to 19 so it was around 19 hours worth of delivering going all across Ottawa like seen everywhere in the fucking city um, it was very fun though and uh, yeah I just learned a lot about about just focusing on one task when you're working on a task until it's actually completely done and not taking on too many other tasks. You can say other small stuff, like there's, there's gonna be moments where you're not delivering hoodies, like, because you can't, or you need a way for a specific time, so you can work on something else, but, like, I would have to-do lists that involved, like, tasks from different, like, projects on the one to-do list, so it's like I'm jumping from one to the other and making a very small amount of progress, but when I made all of my, to when I made my to-do list, the tasks would all be one project, I felt like I was getting way more done because I was finishing a project and then I could do small progress in multiple and finish in way more time in my opinion than if I just focus on one until it's done and then do the next one and then that it may seem at the time that you're moving slower because you're not paying attention to other projects but if you get if you go full out and finish one as fast as you can you'll finish it as fast as you can it'll be the best quality in terms of how it's done so not only are you doing something, because if you're multitasking, you might miss details in certain projects because you're so distracted, right? And you get them twisted and it's not the best. So when you're on one, you should give it your full attention until it's done. It helps you finish it faster and better. And then you go to the next. And then that, I think, long term, take less time to finish multiple projects than if you worked on all multiple projects at once. So that's what I learned and that's what I'm going to apply moving forward. Uh, so now I finished. So now I have a to-do list of projects that I have to do, um, big things, and then within those big things, I have small things to do the big thing, right? So um, for the hoodies, it was process and deliver all hoodies. So my to-do list would be like um, process this, or something's delivered, but I have to go pick it up for, uh, from a FedEx location. So go pick this up at FedEx. Go pay for our duties and taxes and shit. Uh, process for a few hours. Um, that would be my to-do list, like process for a few hours, or, or print out shipping labels, blah, 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 instead of being like process and then uh, work on a website, you know, because I had the project of, of, of reopening the website, which is what I'm working on now, because the hoodie thing is basically done. So now, my new project is just finishing the website. Um, I'm just doing updates, like I'm, nothing drastic is happening in terms of changes, I'm just, I just like to constantly work on it. I didn't just put it up and then let it be there and then not update it, because like, I just want to update stuff, right? So I'm just doing tweaks. And I had closed it because I just I just took a big, like, five-month break when quarantine started happening for other reasons. But um, that's why I closed it. But uh, And I obviously opened it for the shop. That was all you could do on it. Um, but now that it's, I'm going to reopen, I want to reopen by August. So now all of my tasks and my days and everything I work on is just getting this site up. I'm trying to get a new logo done. So... I'm trying to have this done very soon and have it up and it's going to be the main focus, the biggest priority in all of my projects that I'm doing dojo related until um, it's done and then I can move on to the next thing. So you need to not have FOMO to do that because if you, if you focus 
all in one, you'll feel like you're neglecting the other ones and you may miss out on opportunities on the other ones. Like, because a lot of people have this fear of competition, right? Because if I'm not working on it, then someone else is, no, beat me. Uh, but you're not in that person. Every, everyone's in their own lane, right? So just listen. What I figured out is just you have to listen to intuition. The, the karma drop came to me through intuition. I didn't think about it. I had the intention of like, what could I do best to help? in the situation, being in Ottawa and being so far away from what the fuck is happening. And I was just sitting, I was literally just sitting, eating. And then the thought came in my head to just do the trip, like do something to raise money, right? I could donate or I could get, give people value, give people a hoodie, right? Give them something. Cause like, I don't want to call people selfish, but like you're more, there's more, there's more of an incentive to like, give your money for something if you're getting something back for it because it's a point of money right straight so donations tend to not happen a lot if you're not getting anything back and that's not like knocking anyone but it's just normal right like if i make you a hoodie that you like and you and and you not only get a hoodie that you like but you also pay for something where the money is going to a good cause then it's a win-win you get a hoodie that you like and you contribute to uh helping out something some social action so it's it's a, it's a women so um but i didn't think about it that crazy like i just i was just sitting and it was like do that and then 30 minutes i did all the designs you know like i i had it out fast 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 and i did and, I, and it was crazy to see how much people i mean people bought some and participated and i'm so grateful for that it was a very cool very cool project um karma is going to be like a thing where if um, if I if I want to do any kind of raising for any other things where like there's an emergency or something and I wanna and I feel like I want to contribute to a cause, you know, I want people <laughs> and I want people to participate. Um, I'm gonna do that where it's like it won't be dojo, it'll be karma. It'll be like kind of like a subsidiary company, quote unquote, where karma is just like exclamation mark. It's just drops that go that I don't keep either I, I I give a the majority of the proportions of the profits or all the profits that's what karma is going to be for um but with dojo like I'm thinking now uh for all drops I want to I want to donate portions of all the profits and all money I make through other streams of income I want to always be donating and finding ways to like places to put my money because I know there's a lot of corruption in donation stuff and charities and, sh and shit where people really use it for their own benefit so it's just a matter of like informing yourself and being more hands-on too and not just like sending money but maybe using the money to work on a project that helps out like i don't know making care packages for homeless people or whatever um but yeah it's just it's just something i've grown that i that is uh i've grown interest and I don't know if that's grammatically right, but yeah, uh, I won't do those rants and talks a lot. I just I want to update on some shit. I'll do a section where I update on some shit, but uh, most of this will just be literally clips, like candid clips of me just doing the shit, being on the field, doing the work. You feel me? <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, nigga. Black Lives Matter, man. Don't yeah. forget it. Yeah, nigga. Don't forget it. Hey, man. Oh, let me, let me be in this. I just realized both y'all niggas wearing dojo and shit. I gotta, I gotta get that. I gotta get that. I gotta get that. Gotta get that. Turn around, nigga. It's beautiful. Yeah. Is that the picture from, uh... As you can see... I am editing myself. This will be in the edit. Um, I'm just back into editing, you know what I'm saying? Chopping wood, carrying water, you feel me? The usual, man. You know, that's how we do out here, you feel me? We just, we just process, cuz. So we stand for out here, you feel me?